Hey friends, today I will explain to you a 1991 comedy fantasy movie named Defending Your Life. It's another ordinary day in Los Angeles and advertising manager Daniel Miller is spending his 39th birthday alone, driving the new car he almost gifted himself. Unfortunately, this celebration doesn't end well when he gets diverted and ends up crashing against a bus. Then, he wakes up in a purgatory-like area where he and a large group of people, mainly made up of the elderly, are put in trams and sent to Judgment City, which peaks like the western half of the USA on purpose because that's where today's arrivals are from. There are a lot of activities for them to enjoy for the following five days, all of them for free. What is also free is the hotel they'll be staying at. Daniel is given his own room with all the basic requirements, and after the employees promise him he'll get explanations in the morning, he falls asleep as soon as he crashes on the bed. The following day, Daniel is woken up by a phone call from Bob Diamond, his new defense attorney. Bob asks Daniel to come to see him so they can talk about what's going on, and gives him a very interesting tip, he's authorized to eat all he wants because he can't gain weight here. Daniel takes a shower and watches some TV before going downstairs to have breakfast, wearing the same tunic as all the other rivals. He orders an omelet and a glass of orange juice, which arrive as soon as he's done talking and taste better than anything Daniel had ever attempted in his life. Nonetheless, he barely gets to take a bite before he's reminded that the trams will be leaving soon and it wouldn't look good on him if he was late for his appointment. After spending the ride talking to an old lady about the ways they died and the dogs they left behind, Daniel makes it to Bob's office, who proceeds to explain it all. People live through multiple lifetimes, and after each one, there's an examining period, which Daniel is in right now. These lifetimes are recorded from beginning to end, so a pair of judges examine them and decide if the soul is ready to move into the following lifetime or must go back to Earth to try again. Speaking of Earth, everyone there only uses 3-5% to of their brains, which is why people like Bob call them little brains. As you advance through lifetimes, you get smarter for example, Bob uses 48% of his brain. In the beginning though, that 3% means people make decisions based on fears, so to pass the examination, Daniel must prove that he's conquered sufficient fears during his lifetime. Bob will be there with him as his defense attorney, helping him make a case, choosing which memories to show the judges, and going against the prosecutor, who works for the universe itself and must keep it working appropriately. While Bob was on Earth six times before he got to move forward, Daniel has already been twenty times, but Bob tells him not to worry because some people don't get it right until try one hundred. Daniel's trial will last for days, during which they'll look at nine memories of his life. Subsequently, Daniel and Bob go to have lunch together, and Bob tells him a bit more about how this place works. Children don't have to defend themselves, they automatically move forward, and teenagers are to much difficulty so they don't even bother and send them somewhere else. Bob also shares some of his food, which tastes awful to Daniel because he still isn't smart enough to manipulate his senses. Later, Daniel decides to spend his evening watching a stand-up comedian at the local theater, but the man isn't making anyone laugh. Daniel notices a gorgeous blonde woman in the audience, who looks pretty bored with the comedian's bad jokes. But when Daniel throws a jab at the comedian and makes everyone laugh, the blonde woman comes to sit with him at his table. The woman's name is Julia and she thinks she's met Daniel before, a weird feeling that Daniel shares about her. The two of them shortly hit it off and leave the terrible show to go for a walk, during which they bond while chatting about various topics. Daniel is divorced and doesn't have any kids, and while Julia is also divorced, she does have the children. Her trial, nonetheless, will only look at four of her memories. A few hours later, Daniel walks Julia back to her hotel, which is way fancier than the one he's staying at, and they agree to chat on the phone the next day, since they can't see each other because Julia will be going to a party with her lawyer. The following day, Daniel meets with Bob, and they go to the office where the trial will be held. There they meet the judges and prosecutor Lena Foster, who is infamous for being an incredibly ruthless opponent. 
She is the one to choose the first memory they'll be examining, which appears on a big screen in the room. It shows Daniel as a kid, being bullied in the playground and doing nothing to defend himself. Lena calls him a coward for that, and Daniel tries to explain it hadn't been fear, just frustration. Bob cuts in to help and chooses following memory, this one of Daniel as a baby watching his parents fight. His dad had been about to hit his mom, but he stopped himself just in time when he saw the baby crying. Bob argues that this has taught Daniel the meaning of restraint, and it was restraint that he showed on the playground, not fear. Next, Bob presents another memory from middle school. In it, Daniel gives his art allowances to a classmate that would get expelled for stealing again, so when the teacher discovered them, Daniel was the one to get in trouble. Nonetheless, Lena answers by playing another memory from the same day a few hours later, when Daniel's dad scolded him for what happened. Daniel felt under pressure and quickly gave in, confessing the truth about the supplies. Bob thinks the act itself had been courageous regardless of what transpired later, but Lena argues this later development erases the meaning and brings fear back on the table. This is all for today, so after saying goodbye to Bob, Daniel goes to have dinner at a Japanese restaurant where he meets additional men that died young and will have 15 memories examined. By the time he returns to the hotel, Julia had already called and left a message before going to bed saying that she misses him and that they can meet the following day. The following day, Daniel is shocked to find Bob couldn't make it and his substitute attorney is Dick Stanley, who is very friendly with Lena, unlike Bob who hated her. Daniel feels he's at drawback, but the judges start the trial anyway. Lena begins showing a memory of Daniel as a 24-year-old man that has been working for a while and saved $10,000 to invest. A friend from college had given Daniel a tip to invest in Casio, but Daniel declined because the company hadn't been doing well back then. Nowadays though, Casio is a very successful business, and those $10,000 could have become $37 million. Rather, he invested in cattle that ended up dead. Daniel complains that they're passing judgment based on money, which Lena denies. It's about the decisions he's chosen in his life. Dick stays silent nonetheless, and lets Daniel do the talking. Since he won't show a memory to counter Lena's either, she proceeds to show another one for her side of the case. This memory shows adult Daniel as a married man asking his wife to help him practice for an incoming interview because he wants to ask for a high salary, and he wishes courage to do so. However, when the time for the interview comes, Daniel accepts the first low salary he's offered as soon as he arrives. Lena says this is another solid proof of fear, and Daniel barely gets to defend himself before she plays a montage of a bunch of small mistakes that Lena claims are a good way of judging Daniel's poor judgment procedure. Without a word from Dick to help him, Daniel leaves the trial in a bad mood, but he begins feeling better as soon as he finds Julia, who also just finalized her examination for the day. They decide to visit the Pavilion of Past Lives, which is a special attraction that shows you five of your past lives. Daniel is weirded out when he discovers he used to be a Native American in the wild, but Julia is extremely happy about how different her lives had been, including Prince Valiant and a whaler. Afterward, they take the tram to the mini golf course, chatting about how much better they always feel when they see each other, and how they can't take the other out of their minds. While playing golf, Julia eventually confesses how she died, which is very embarrassing. She simply tripped, fell, and hit her head. After spending a lovely evening together, Daniel drops off Julia at her hotel, where she invites him to come to her examination the following day if he finishes early. It's hard for them to say goodbye though, and they end up kissing. The following morning, Daniel is glad to see Bob is back, even if he arrives late. Seemingly he spent the previous day trapped near the inner circle of thought, but he refuses to explain what that was. The trial begins and Lena presents a memory of Daniel not wanting to get on a stage to give a speech representing the company he worked for. His co-worker propelled him onto the stage anyway and Daniel froze, but luckily he was saved from potential embarrassment when the building got evacuated because of a gas leak. 
Bob tries to argue that getting on the stage is a sign of courage, but Lena denies it, reminding the judges that Daniel was forced onto the stage and didn't utter a word in fact, he never even tried to speak in public again. Following, Bob shows a memory of Daniel having an accident while driving a snowmobile in the mountains he fell and broke his leg, so he had to drag his body through the snow for two miles. Lena argues self-preservation isn't real courage and points out that just like it happened with the speech, Daniel never tried again because of fear. Daniel shortly denies this and explains he never tried riding a snowmobile again because the whole experience had already been awful even before the accident, he just didn't like that particular sport. The judges seem to like the way Daniel defends himself, so he leaves the room in a good mood. Since they completed quickly today, he goes to Julia's examination and arrives just in time to watch a memory of her saving her kids and the cat from a fire in their house. Now Daniel feels inadequate next to her, but he still wants to spend time together. They decide to have dinner at a famous Italian restaurant, where they ask for two humongous plates of food. The food is delicious, and their conversation is fun as always, but the things make Daniel exceptionally nervous. First, the waiter makes a judgmental noise when he hears Daniel is having nine minutes examined during the trial. And second, Lena arrives to have dinner in the same restaurant as them, watching Daniel and his embarrassing behavior towards the waiter from a few tables over. When dinner is over, Daniel walks Julia to her hotel, where she asks him to spend the night with her. She may look like she's got it all jointly, but she doesn't, she's always putting too much work into everything. Being with Daniel is effortless though, and Julia wants to spend their last night here together because they don't know if they'll be able to leave together too. Daniel wants to stay but still turns her down, believing he shouldn't Julia is more to him than a one night stand, and he doesn't want to ruin their relationship. Which has already been extra amazing than any night he spent with any woman in his life. Julia tells him she loves him and the couple kiss before Daniel leaves. During the tram ride, he has a plenty to think about, so as soon as he makes it to the hotel, Daniel calls Julia. Her hotel's receptionist picks up and tells him Julia has put up a do not disturb sign, which means she can't be sent any calls, so Daniel leaves her a simple message. He loves her more than life itself, he never met anyone like her, and he'll miss her forever. The following day is the final examination. Bob presents a memory of Daniel in his 30s after his divorce, taking an impulse decision for the sake of his own happiness. Instead of cashing in the ticket from a cancelled trip with his wife, he decided to go anyway. Not only that, he decided to use one-third of his life savings to change it to first class. Bob thinks this takes a lot of guts and tells the judges Daniel is ready to pass on his following lifetime. Lena doesn't argue against any of this, but she does present her final memory, which has been taken here in Judgment City, it's from last night, showing Daniel turning down Julia because he was scared. Feeling bad about it, Daniel admits he had been afraid, but Bob comes to the rescue and clarifies it had been thoughtfulness, a way of caring for Julia's feelings. Daniel agrees with this and promises he'll work as hard as he can in his following life if they grant it to him. The examination is done, so 30 minutes later, Bob and Daniel go to Bob's office to see what the ultimate judgment is. Sadly, Daniel must return to Earth. Bob reminds him that going back doesn't mean they're right, and Daniel won't remember anything of this when he goes back, so he won't be upset for long. He just needs to follow his heart and take opportunities when he can. Minutes later, Daniel is on the tram that will take him back to Earth and sees Julia in a different car that is taking her to her new lifetime. Remembering Bob's words, Daniel takes a risk and force opens the doors of the tram to jump out of it and go after the love of his life. Subsequently dodging a few vehicles, Daniel jumps on Julia's tram, screaming that he loves her while repeatedly being electrocuted by the tram's security system but still holding on. All this is being watched by the judges, Lena and Bob, who convinces them this is proof sufficient that Daniel is brave. The judges change their opinion and send an order to open the tram, which allows Daniel to get in and join Julia in traveling to a new lifetime jointly. And the end.
If you are a lover of similar content like this, take a look at my distinct videos, and if you love it, please break the like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification horn. Catch sight of you in the successive video.